The Lord is I shepherd, I shall not want him. Make it I like down in a green pasture. Yes, him lead that I beside still water them. Him restore it I soul. Him lead that I in the part of I justness for him name's sake. Yay! Though I rasta, I go walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I can't fear no evil. For thy rod and thy staff them comforted I and I. Uno prepared a table before right in the presence of our enemy them. Uno anointed I head with no oil. Me cup run it over. Surely goodness and mercy. I go follow I all the days of I Ivan. Me I go dwell in the house of the Lord God. Ja. Kadama we gromabi a tela e. Igzag beer. Tana istalina ba shanti 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 shanti. Kadama we gromabi a where two centuries meet in the name of the most I Jah at the so Jaja de if Jaja never build up your house the builder I will build it in the same way if Jaja never watch upon them same house when built for you the watchman I will watch it in vain the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and them is saved many are the afflictions of the righteous but Jah shall deliver him from all of them he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most I Jah shall there in abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I and I give thanks and Isis unto your name. King of kings and Lord of lords, the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah, Amasa Yehuda, Yehuda, Amasa, Nagusta, Nagusta, Daniel, Kumaya, Sataya, Aymana, Pio, 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 Aya, Kadama, We, Gruma, Be, Ate, La, E. This is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushunamo, where we speak truth to power. And my name, Black Rasta. In every traditional African home, there is a black pot. And the black pot, this wonderful black pot, is so significant. And it symbolizes the unity of the family and beyond. Whenever the black pot is on fire, something sumptuous is cooking. Everybody is ready with taste buds, uh, ready to enjoy the sumptuousness from the black pot. Different kinds of ingredients, shapes, and size, aroma smells and even colors are put right there inside the black pot and it will come out finally as one homogeneous product well nourishing and at the same time very uniting that is why right there in the black pot we tell you that is all about our people our continent our land we normally don't like to criticize but if we must criticize we would only just criticize to build and not to destroy this is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushunamo, where we speak truth to power. And remember, my brother, my sister, hey, we are live via satellite on Pan-African TV. We are also live on Loud Silence TV, live on Ghana Web TV, live also on our own TV, Black Empire TV. My brother, my sister, we are also live across the world, the continent of Africa, and even across the universe and beyond. Oceania, through the power of the Almighty Father. Yes. We are spiritual beings. Here we don't criticize. We don't do politics. But if we must criticize, we would only just criticize to build and not to destroy. To talk politics, which is so infantile, no, we would rather talk Pan-Africanism, patriotism. This is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushunamo, where we speak truth to power. My name, Black Rasta. First issue for discussion today. Watch it. What is it all about? It says... A bouquet of booze for Nanado. A bouquet of booze. Normally they will tell you it's a bouquet of flowers. But this one is a bouquet of booze. Nana Akufuado is the president of the Republic of Ghana. So very egotistical and arrogant. He doesn't listen to anybody. He listens to his arrogant self. He messes up every now and then. Now hear me now. A leader is no leader who doesn't listen to the people. A leader is not a leader who is not followed by the people. 
Now, if the people reject the leader and he's taking a walk and claims he's a leader, he's only fooling himself. He's only taking a stroll. If you are walking and you call yourself a leader and nobody follows you, then you are taking a stroll. You are just taking a walk. Watch this. Global Citizen Concert. 90% of the audience booed Akufuado. And this is Bull God, formerly called Bulldog. My brother, my sister, read it. According to famed Ghanaian creative arts figure, Lawrence Nana Isiama Hansen, professionally known as Bull God, President Nana Adudankwa Akufu Ado was booed at this year's Global Citizen Festival because he found himself at the wrong place. Come along. Come, 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 come. All right. That environment is not for him. He said on a crowd based hits FM when he was engaged on the incident on Monday, 26 September 2022, challenging the fact that same did not happen to Obama and Macron. He responded with, These other presidents have done something for their people, something positive. Asked if the president of Ghana was not doing something positive, he was queried. He also queried, Charlie, what is happening? If he was doing something positive, why would they boo him off the stage? He challenged. He agreed with the daybreak hits host Andy Dusty that even with all the infrastructure attributed to former President John Dramani Mahama, the people were still displeased and claimed he had done nothing. My brother, my sister, hear me now. Nana Akufu Ado was at an event. And at this event, they booed the hell out of him. Probably the first booze he ever had in his life. And according to Bulgard, 90% of the whole crowd booed him. My brother, my sister, we were made to believe that it was only a small section of the people that booed him. Now we are hearing that about 90% of the whole crowd booed him. Why would they boo him? The president of the land, he was only there for a six-minute speech. Yet they booed him. Some people said, well, people were there to see performances and not to listen to speeches. But this is the president of the land. In other countries where this festival happened, they probably had other people coming in to give speeches. How come? When it came to our turn, our president was booed. The lies are too much. The arrogance too much. As we have said before, this is a referendum for the president's tenure of office. He has two more years to deal with this situation. Mr. President, all your jokers around you will blow the horn around you and blow your horn. They will tell you all the things you want to hear to make you happy. They will massage your ego. They will push you around and make you feel like a king. Yet you are a naked king walking in the streets. The people did not even expect you there. But when you got there, it was unanimous. If they had expected that you were coming there, then we would have said that they planned to boo you. But nobody knew you were even going to be there. Am I right? Am I wrong? Did they expect you there? Was it announced that the president of Ghana would be there? Was that the reason the people decided to organize and boo you? Or they did not know that you were coming there at all? Ask yourself these questions. And when you answer these questions, you have two more years to redeem your arrogant self. Two more years to redeem your dirty presidency. Two more years to think like the people. Dash it away. This is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushunamo, where we speak truth to power. Next thing I want to look at very quickly, and it's going to be really quick, says, Junk Ghana, crap like scrap. Junk Ghana, crap like scrap. You know the scrap boys, they go around looking for scrap material. Empty cans, broken metals, they carry all this as scrap into the junkyard, 
where they will refurbish that into something else. Why are they calling Ghana junk Ghana? Watch this. Ghana's economy to take almost six years before full recovery. At that time, I will be 54 years. Six more years for me to retire. My God have mercy. Can you believe that? At that time, I will be 54 years before Ghana will recover. And who is saying this? Professor Bob King. Who is Professor Bob King? Look at him. Why is he saying this? Come along. Hey, watch this. Financial economist Professor Bob King is warning that the Ghanaian uh, economy will take almost five to six years before it fully recovers from its present predicament. Ghana's economy has been hit by an unsustainable debt which has now reached alarming levels, increasing inflation and weakening the city. This has culminated in the high cost of living and doing business. It has subsequently led to the downgrade of the country's credit rating to deeper junk status by rating agency Fish Dashitawi. Ghana's economy has been downgraded from junk to deeper junk. The American will say from shh to deeper shh. It's a big terrible insult. That with all your gold or your diamond and your bauxite and your everything, you are still a junk economy. Junk country. What do we do with junk? Junk is crap. So we scrap it. The scrap boys are ready to come for Ghana. My brother, my sister, this is so disturbing. Now, professionals have told us that the inflation rate in Ghana is 80% plus. But our officials will tell us that it's just below 40%. My brother, my sister, fuel prices are increasing. People are parking their cars at home. Now, everybody is thinking about another way to commute. Prices of food increasing. Those who used to eat four times a day now eat once a day. And those who were eating once a day are dead. My brother, my sister, people are unable to pay for their day-to-day -day activities. What kind of a country is this? And our president is so good at one thing, excuses. Ukrainian, Russian war, oh, uh, uh, pandemic, uh, uh, uh. that's it. It's all about the pandemic and it's all about the war. Coronavirus, Ukraine, Russian war. Are you that weak that two countries are feuding and all your citizens have to be hungry? Are you the only country in the world that has to go so deep into deep junk? Deep shh. My brother, my sister, and other countries by now are enjoying themselves. And we are so down. What is so unique about us, as somebody would ask, so unique? That term is not grammatically right, though. My brother, my sister, the president has let us down. The leadership has let us down. Look at this. Government to face difficult financing options in repaying maturing treasury bills. What are treasury bills? You go and buy treasury bills from the government. In other words, you give your money to the government and say, government, do business with this. And government will say, okay, we will give you this amount of money after this period in addition to your principal, right? Yes, we we'll add something. That's a treasury bill. People are encouraged to do that. It's one of the ways by which government is able to make money. Those of you who have studied a little bit of national income, you will realize that treasury bills form part of the income of the government, right? Now, some of them are maturing. Government is crying that the way things are going, they have blown the money, and therefore they might not be able to meet their part of the agreement. Now, this reminds me of Nam One. This is the whole country, Ghana. Treasury bills have matured. Government is crying that it might not be able to meet this part of the agreement to give the people whatever money is due them because if you use the people's money to do business. Remember Nam One? What did Nam One do? Nam One, my brother, my sister, took the people's money 
sold them out some kind of gold, whatever it was, and asked them if he could market the gold for them in quotes. They gave back the gold. So ultimately, it was money he took from the people, and people were coming to take additions, value for their what? Money. It's almost like the treasury bills. And when all of a sudden the government said, everybody go and get your money. Take it right now. He's a swindler. Hey, this one is a, 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 a very terrible business thing. If you don't do it, don't blame anybody. My brother, my sister, a Ponzi scheme, they said. The next day, seven trillion people were in front of Namwan's door. We all want our money. And Ghanaians blamed Namwan for not being able to pay everybody their money. This is Ghana. This is Ghana. Treasury bills. We've given you our money. It's time now to come for our money and also take the value added. Ghana is crying. Is Ghana not a Ponzi scheme? Is Ghana not a Ponzi scheme country? Who are the scammers in this country? Who are the Nam ones in this country? Or they are Nam twos? You see, let's call a spade a spade. Let us be truthful and factual. You collapsed the young man's business, killed him for no reason. And now you yourselves are in the same predicament. You see how it is? My brother, my sister, let us read that story. What does it say? The government may face complicated refinancing options in repaying treasury bills that will mature in October 2022. According to the weekly fixed income update by Data Bank Research, uh, refinancing offer on October 3, 2022 may not get much traction due to the expected domestic debt restructuring. Whatever terms they use, I will not pretend to be a business scholar. But it means one thing to me. The government is going to have problems servicing all these treasury bills that have matured. Dash it away. My brother, my sister, this is the black port, a.k.a. Kukushunamo, where we speak truth to power. When we return, we will be talking more. But I have a quote for you on junk economies. What is it to say junk economies? From when Nkrumah held it and gave it to us on a silver platter, it was never referred to as a junk economy. How has it deteriorated this much? Hey! Woyo! This is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushunamo, where we speak truth to power. And my name, Black Rasta. My brother and my sister, do business with us. Yes, do business with us. Pick our numbers off the screen and touch us on WhatsApp. Free call. Or you can send us a WhatsApp message. You can also call us on the regular line. Of course, we will respond. And let us be that powerful line, that lifeline to your staggering business. The truth is only one. It's an orphan. Not many people would like to associate with the truth. The truth, bitter as it is, kills and heals. Think about it, my brother, my sister. This is the black pot, and all we're talking about is patriotism and not politics. Rewiring the minds of the next generation so we can have a better nation, a better continent. The problem with Africa, the problem with Ghana, is not roads and hospitals and schools. It's all about the attitude. 
the mindset. That is what we're doing right now. So the next generation can have a better country, a better continent. This is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushunum, where we speak truth to power. And my name, Black Rasta. Let's look at the next thing very quickly. And what does it say? Hear me now. Of knighthood and gold. Who is this knight we're talking about? The Queen of England, most of the time, will look at who is doing what and then knight you. Robert Mugabe was knighted. Robert Mugabe was knighted. Some other people were knighted in different, different African countries and beyond. They'll give you a certain crown, some accolade. You are either a knight or a dam. If you are a man, you are a knight. If you are a lady, you are a dam. D A M E. But my brother, let's look at it deeper. Why does the Queen of England knight people? Why does England knight people? And I want to concentrate on Africa. Why knight people in Africa? This is Sir Sam Jonah. He was the CEO of our biggest producing gold entity in Ghana. Now it's called Anglo Gold Ashanti. This is the guy. He made a lot of money. He's seen as one of the richest people in Ghana. And at the time that he was CEO, they knighted him. Many people thought about it and spoke against it. Some talked for it. Some patted him on the back and some said, no, he's a sellout. Today he's talking about it. Watch. I, was, I wasn't awarded knighthood for giving Ghana's gold to Queen Elizabeth, says Sam Jonah. Says Sam Jonah has explained why he was awarded a knighthood by the British royal family in a bid to dispel rumors around the award he received in 2003. Come. Let's read. The former Ashanti Gold Chief Executive Officer disclosed that he received the award for leadership within the Commonwealth Group of Nations. He said, that reason was contrary to the popular notion that handing over Ghana's gold to the then Queen Elizabeth II was what earned him the knighthood. First of all, I was not awarded the knighthood because I gave Ghana's gold to the Queen. I have heard all of that before. In fact, at the time when I became chief executive of Ashanti, Ghana had 55% of the company. And I am not sure Ghana government would allow you to take 55% of the queen, to the queen. He said on the BBUM show on Ghana television on September 25. Dash it away. My brother, my sister, this is what he's saying. He didn't give the gold to the people. At that time, Ghana had 55%. But he did not also say whether he gave the queen any gold or not. Let's read the story further. And let's see what is there. My brother, my sister, the story further goes on to say, ask why he was knighted. He responded, the British won't tell you. Of course. But officially, they said it was for leadership and business in the Commonwealth. That is what the official statement said. And to an extent that I had a couple of lifetime achievement awards unrelated to royalty, there must have been something that they saw. My brother, my sister, this is interesting. Did you hear that? The British won't tell you. If you are awarding me, then you must tell me why you are awarding me. If you hide some of the virtues, whatever that may be, and only release some, then it is a very, very demonic award. Let's look at the last paragraph. In June 2003, Jonah became the first Ghanaian to be knighted. First Ghanaian. 19 years ago, in the 21st century, when he was presented with an honorary knighthood, KBE, by the then Prince of Wales, in recognition of his achievements as an African businessman, a leading business executive from the Commonwealth and an international public figure. Now, my attention is on KBE. KBE. What does it mean? 
Our people have to be smart. KBE means what? Knight of the British Empire. Knight of the British Empire. Dash it away. Knight of the British Empire. What is the meaning of that? You are a knight. Now in history, when you think about knights, these are the people who ride the horses, they wear the whatever on their heads, helmets, and then they have spears. These are knights, right? Basically, every little child will tell you that this is the picture of a knight I create in my head whenever I hear the word knight. Knight of the British Empire. What is the British Empire? Now, the British Empire is nothing but Africa. The colonized countries in Africa and beyond, coupled with the atrocities that the British meted out to us as a people in the so-called British Empire. Ghana was one of those. The rape, the killing, the stealing of our gold and diamonds. In fact, the dehumanization of our people. They seem to be proud of it. The British Empire. Do you get it? Now the British Empire is nothing but a figure of colonization. Atrocities. Murder. Bloodshed. Rape. Stealing. Robbery. So if you are a knight of the British Empire, it means you are a warrior that represents rape, represents bloodshed, represents killing, Represents robbery and represents anything bad that happened in the British Empire. Do you get it? Because of that, a number of smart black people have refused any such award from the king or the queen of England to be knighted. One of them, Benjamin Zephaniah. Benjamin Zephaniah is a great black poet who was dyslexic. Right from the beginning, he suffered from dyslexia. But he overcame it and became a powerful poet in the UK. When the Queen of England called upon him, wrote officially to him to knight him, he said, I don't need it. I don't want it. With all respect, you only remind me of the atrocities and killing and murder of our people. So Sam Jonah, you want to be president, you must denounce it. I will never vote for any guy like Sam Jonah. I met him. I had a conversation with Sam Jonah some years back. You are representing the atrocities of the British. The murder, the killing. You are slapping us in the face with the British atrocities in our own country. That is what it means to say British Empire. That British Empire has crumbled. It's no more there. We don't want to be reminded of it. So for you to start walking around, walking around boom, 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 like a zombie, wearing crosses around your neck and all those things, and calling yourself a knight of the British Empire, that is the wisdom behind it. You get it? I will never accept it. There's no way I would accept that. You didn't know. Now you know. What would you do? The burden of knowledge. Now that you know, what would you do? Our people are so ignorant and stupid that anything white is nothing but angelic. They do not question. How can you go for an award and you are told that the British people would not tell you the real reason for awarding you that? But topically, facially, face value, it is for leadership. Hallelujah. Is it a secret society? Is it a cult? That you are not told that because you did this, you did that, you did that. Basically, that is why we are giving you this. Nothing more. See, the British will not tell you. And you accept it. How about if you don't deserve it? That's why recently we all was talking about blah, blah, blah. We have to come out and tell her that, hear me now. Hear me. The queen represented a throne of atrocities. She might not personally be involved in all these things, but she sat on that throne, bathed on the throne that represented atrocities against our people. If she wanted to dissociate herself from all the atrocities, she stood the chance of doing it in her lifetime. She never did. 
If a man is told how much he has hurt you and he hasn't apologized, it means that he stands by what he did and he's okay, he has no problem. You can go to hell. That's what the king, the queen represented to us. All the atrocities, they never apologized. Then you, Sam Jonah, will go around saying, yeah, I was knighted not because I gave gold. <laughs> Even Asantehini gave gold. Asantehini gave gold to Queen Elizabeth when she came here. Gold. It was a gift. Was he knighted? He was knighted. But you got knighted. Why were you knighted? Oh, good leadership and what, what, what. During your reign, what was it like with Anglo Gold? Did it perform marvelously? I leave it here, my brother, my sister. This is the blackboard, and we've been talking about knighthood and what? Gold. Is it necessarily about giving out the gold? It is about selling out your birthright and selling your identity and dignity for that award. To accept that you are a knight of the British Empire that had nothing but atrocities against us, it means that you are a sellout to the black race. You are a sellout to the people who were referred to as the British Empire. True? Who doesn't agree? This is the black pot, a.k.a. Kuku Show No More, where we speak truth to power. Dash it away when we return. More fire. Hey! Whoa! -yo. Power? <laughs> My name is Waris, but all of you know me as Comedian Waris. I come from a home where cleanliness is not only next to godliness, but a must. We seldom fell ill and we saved our doctor this headache. At an early age, my mother introduced us to our best gift ever, PJ's Acid Cleaner. PJ's Acid Cleaner kills 99% of all gems and keeps your WCs, marbles, tiles and concrete floors sparkling new and clean. In fact, you don't need any extra muscle when it comes to PJ's Acid Cleaner. It has all the muscle. When my fiancée, Mamiya, first visited me, I almost lost her. She didn't believe I was single, lived alone, and without a house help. Yet my house had this great fragrance and was always clean. I had to reveal my secret. PJ's Acid Cleaner, my family's greatest gift. For bulk purchases. Please call 0244-624-526 or 0262-233-243. Abus, Abus chapter. Hey, babe! Sister Paulina, we're reading glasses here, Chini, and we're reading Hebrews. Hey! Madam! Madam, I'm going to read the glasses. 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 Hey, Anukro. Tinatet Hayan Herbal Capsules. A full supplement for good vision. And not recommended for children below 12 years. Asthmatic patients. Pregnant and breastfeeding mothers. I draw you baby at work. For Tinatet Herbal Show. Hey, now go away. Yeah, go away. Tinatet Hayan. See clear.
country home, it's a beauty place for every woman. Uh, we do braids, weight cups, weave ons, nails, pedicure, manicure, waxing, massages. We do everything concerning beauty. So if any lady is thinking about beauty, I believe this is the right place for you to be. training here. We do brace training, we do weight cups installation, we do waxing, I mean anything that we do, the services that we render here, we also train people. So if you want to be a master in nails, if you want to be a professional nail technician, this is the right place for you to be. We will train you and make sure you are a professional, not just any nail tech. At Check Luxury Beauty Home, we train you to be your own boss. We have international trainers who train you to fit in anywhere in the world. Um, we have our one man training and we also have uh, two weeks. It's between two weeks to one month, depending on the individual. Whatever you want, we give it to you. At Chick Luxury Beauty Home, we give you quality yet affordable. So come and get trained and be your own boss. I'm a Jamaican. I was born in a little parish, a beautiful little parish called Clarendon, outside of Kingston. Everybody knows Kingston, but Clarendon is where I come from. I am a singer. I am an author. I am a, um, a songwriter. I am a poetess and, I'm a, and I am an actress. Right? I do the whole, I've been doing it for many, many years. And so um, basically that's who I am. I'm uh, anything art, everything art. That's me. You think art and you think Diana. Yeah. <laughs> I do reggae music, I do inspirational music, I do cultural music, I do um, gospel, if you call it gospel. You know, I do. I just do uplifting, clean music, even the 12 year old can listen to it. Or, you know, or if the adult, if you feel like it needs some motivation or so. The kind of music I do will really, you know, motivate you and that's basically what I do with reggae predominantly. Okay, so the inspiration behind Bed of Roses is this. I actually, you know, bad to bad, as we say in Jamaica, there's that little stigma that has always been going on that, you know, you know, men are, most men are not good men, and you don't really have good men, especially like if they're poor and they can't take care of you. Women have two hands and two feet too, so you know, crippled, you know, you don't necessarily need somebody to take care of you. What you need is a man with a good heart, who loves you and who will work to you, so, with you so you can build an empire. So, Bed of Roses is really in the defense of men and so also to really rewrite the narrative that if a man is poor, he can't take care of nothing no good not good for you which is a lie you understand so there are lots of men out there who don't have a lot of money but they you know they are good and upright men you know they, they just want someone to work with them and someone to motivate them and so that song was really um you know to celebrate good men who don't necessarily have a lot of money Give me a firm foundation with the sun. But of course, this is available to the public um, on our platform called 16 Bars Multimedia. So on the website, it will be that 16 B A R S M has in Mary, M has in Mary.com. So that is 16 Bars MM.com. Definitely. I am available for live performances any day of the week. So you can contact me 
on, first of all, you can reach out to me on my Instagram as Empress Diana, and my Diana has two N's. So that's Empress, which is D-I-A-N-N-A. -N -N -A. So that's Empress Diana, that's my IG. And um, also, you can also, you know, send me a, a, a link or something on our YouTube. Our YouTube is the same name of our website, 16 Bars Multimedia. We have lots of um, work there. Uh, you can reach us there, and also you can um, you can reach us at 16 Bars MM at Outlook.com. So that is 16. This time it's the word spe all spelled out. 16 Bars. MM at Outlook.com and if you choose when you go on our website which is the same 16 bars mm.com um, you can go to the contact page and send us um, a, a message you understand and usually we respond within a couple of hours all right um, so that's basically it. and I'm sure at the end of um, this you you will have a number somewhere to contact us all right so that's that's it that's what I do and you know keep the music locked <laughs> Yes, I bless. Nice to go a veggie where we plant me now go hungry. Come and say, don't you hear movie now we plant Give me a firm foundation. Sorry, sorry. Oh, Doc. Hey, so I want to know why you did. That's why she she she. I feel so drained. Turn your ma. No, see the young woman cook, 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 cook. It's only a stomach ulcer. Said the young. Heart burn. So I say I'm back home. I don't cry. I mean, I'm saying if you're being forced, me, you know, I don't you know. Test results. Not sure. Say when you're malaria, when you move. Aye, three D. Yes, malaria. Nani yem no so we no here. Tina tet tumak. Ena tina tet malake. Fama no na no hobeto no. Tinatet Tumak, I'm free. Tinatet Malake, I am a malaria fever. And a Tinatet Tumak mixture, I am a Ubia Wenya indigestion. Yes, you should move when you malaria and sign a waffle every Not recommended for children below 12 years. Pregnant or lactating mothers should consult a doctor. Go on, skip a judge. Blackboard, Cocoa Show. Why we speak truth to power? My name is Black Rasta. Why well, the most peaceful country in the world is Mauritius? Are you surprised? I'm sure a lot of people would have liked to say Ghana. Ish. Ghanaians are booing their president. Ghanaians. Presently, we have some ritual killings around. Probably these things have lowered Ghana down. And Mauritius is on top. According to the 2022 index this is the show and my name black rasta come along next thing i would like to look at is very simple and what does it say watch it customs officers wreck the nation smuggling read the grammar customs officers wreck the nation smuggling my brother my sister gra is looking for them the soldiers are there. Ghana Revenue Authority is so mad and hungry. Very hungry. Very hungry. Hungry for results. Smugglers Paradise, GRA to investigate how customs officials aided in oil smuggling. Jesus, come along. Customs officers who were supposed to fight smuggling and give the nation some money are rather causing a huge hemorrhage in the country's coffers. Watch this. The Ghana Revenue Authority, GRA, says it has opened investigations into revelations that some customs officials took bribe or take bribe to assist importers smuggle thousands of cooking oil from neighboring countries into Ghana. Joy News' expose, Smuggler's Paradise, uncovered how the officials are bribed to assist local and foreign importers to smuggle oil from neighboring Togo and Ivory Coast to markets in Ghana. It is estimated that the state is losing 300 million cities in revenue as the smugglers and dealers are bringing in 5,000 metric tons of cooking oil annually. So every year, 300 million Ghana cities gone. In a country that is starving and running to the IMF for local fuel. Thousands of people 
thousands of gallons of vegetable cooking oil are smuggled every day into Ghana through the Cote d'Ivoire and Togo borders. The state is losing millions of cities in revenue due to the non-declaration and evasion of taxes by these importers and traders. Top officials of customs as well as junior rank officers at various checkpoints are complicit. The smugglers evade tax, connive with customs officials and outwit security officials, making it difficult for local players to compete. This is because the smuggled oil brands are cheaper on the market. You see what they are doing to our country? And the money that they make from this dirty game, they go to the church and they give us tight. They go to the church and give us collection. They carry it and go to Mecca to look at the Kaaba and to look at the grave of the Prophet Muhammad, hoping that they will go to heaven. This is how they are killing the country. They have forgotten that the Prophet Muhammad said, if you do not love your country, then some part of Iman in you is gone. Do you know what that means? Iman, faith, includes loving your country, being patriotic to your country. So you cannot be a good Muslim, Muslim if you do not love your country. You cannot be a good Christian if you don't love your country. Yet 99% of all Ghanaians and Africans are Muslim or Christian. True? True? My brother and my sister, when Christ went to his hometown, his own hometown, and was not received well, what did he do? He got angry and walked out. He couldn't even perform a single miracle. You know what that means? That was when it came out that the prophet is not even recognized in his own home. Patriotism. Love. If you don't have it, forget it. You have no identity. I don't love where I come from because my people there are bad. How can you change that? You have thrown your hands in the air. You can't change it. So that's it. Everything is gone with the wind. You rather want to belong to another country whose people have worked so hard to change it and make it suitable. You are a lazy idiot. Work it out and change your country. Don't be a fool. Come together. Your ancestors came together to fight and make sure that this country stood on its two legs. So if there's a problem, it's not for you to flee. It's for you to stay and set it free. You hear me? My brother, my sister, customs officials are smuggling and helping smugglers to bring in goods that will outcompete with the Ghanaian market players customs officers that we pay to protect us where is the patriotism at the end of the day the president won't have money at the end of the day the nation won't have money 300 million looted out through the bodies in smugglers paradise why why are we cursed it's all corruption you let the people come and you take money from them and you go and blow it away. When you have cancer, you don't understand. There's no corrupt person who lives long. You would have cancer. Liver cirrhosis. All kinds of diseases. You move from one hospital to the other. Spend all the stolen money. When no money is there to be spent, you die. After another long period of suffering. I believe in that. My brother and my sister. You are what you give to the world. If you give to the world corruption, you will die in corruption. If you give to the world good health, you will have good health. If you give to the world, look, it's, there's a mirror between you and the world. Whatever you see in that mirror is what that world is going to give back to you. Some people won't understand this, but that is what it is. I feel so sad when I see our nationals. Doing all these things. Some of us, if we wanted to be corrupt, we would have been richer than even the president of Ghana. You know why? Because we have the grace to convince everybody. There's no country I, Black Rasta, would go to and want to meet with the president and I won't meet. It's a grace. But is the grace to be used to cheat and to steal and be corrupt? The grace is supposed to be used to teach 
Pan-Africanism, patriotism, and to unite the people, rewire their thinking and their mindset for the next generation. True? True? That's what it is, brethren. I feel so sad that people that we pay with the taxpayers' money to protect us, they are those who are finishing us. Police, people are paid to protect us. They set hardened criminals free because they bribe them and unleash them on us again. Sometimes they even give their guns to criminals to kill us. Oh, where did we go wrong? Where did we go wrong? Customs officials that were supposed to protect our borders, they opened the borders for terrorists, economic terrorists, and Al-Qaeda and the rest to come in, including Asha Huang and the rest. What the heck is happening? Jesus is Lord. What is this? My brother, my sister. So that's what is in the headlines. Customs. Our own Ghanaian customs. Dirty minded. They are all in a hurry to build their houses. They have forgotten that. If Jaja never build up your house, the builder I will build it in vain. You read the Bible every time. Think about it. If God doesn't build it, you build in vain. And if God doesn't watch it, you watch in vain. The watchman would watch it in vain. Think about it. My brother, no matter how much you are paid, accept it. Live within your means. Don't try to compare. Be there. Hey, it will spiral. Forget about who drives up and who flies what. If yours is to ride a bicycle, ride it and see how it's going to work. When I travel to other countries, that's what I see. The rich man will talk to the poor man. The same way you talk to another rich man. There's respect. Because everybody is self-sufficient in whatever they have. I go to America. I don't see rich people talk to poor people anyhow. But in my country, I see it a lot. And it's all about the attitude. The mindset. Customs, shame on you. You have let this country down. You are traitors. You are worse than Al-Qaeda and Al-Shabaab. Posterity will judge you so harshly. And I'm glad that the GRA is going to check it out. I don't even trust them. Right now it's all about stealing in every institution. Not one person who was accepting credibility. No patriotism. And our country keeps sinking like the Titanic. That's it, I will let me deal with the next thing. Next thing I would like to look at, my brother, my sister. And I'm about to go. I have just about a few seconds more to go. No gold for Ghana anymore. Oh, Jesus. Oh. My brother, before 1957, this country was called the Gold Coast. Because the white man came here and saw so much gold, it gave him a heart attack. Today they say we have no gold anymore. Why? Why? Watch this. Ghana has zero equity interest in Anglo gold. Ashanti. After it sold. And this is Sam Jonah, former CEO of that same outfit. He himself is rich. That's where he made his money. Big money. My brother, my sister. Our biggest gold entity. We don't own anything there. And when you read, it breaks your heart. What does it say? A renowned business executive and former chief executive officer of Ashanti Goldfields, Sir Sam Jonah, has revealed that Ghana's government has sold all its shares in Anglo Gold Ashanti. We will find out who sold it. Watch. So, the Ghana government sold and took $400 million out. And so, Ghana government became 25% and not a 55% shareholder. And later on, we met and became Anglo Gold Ashanti. And currently, as we speak, it has zero equity interest in Anglo Gold Ashanti. The Ghana government has 10% in the mines, like Obuasi, etc., etc. But as the company that merged, the Ghana government has 0% of Anglo Gold Ashanti, which is a shame because we sold. That's it away. Hold on, hold on, bring it back. We'll bring it back. 
I wanted to talk about this later, but let me just join it. Look at the second paragraph as compared to other countries. It says, Sam Jonah also stated that in South Africa, all the mines are owned by South Africans, which meant that profit was not expatriated. And that accounted for Johannesburg's recognition as a gold mining city. Dash it away. Oh, you are. This is the chief executive officer. Former. The biggest gold outfit. They've sold everything. How many of us remember Ejapa? That's the same thing. Nanado sold the rest of the gold. Why? What have we done? They are not doing anything to hold in equity for the next generation. They get it all now, blow it now on their ego and die. And their carcasses will not even be eaten by dogs. Dogs won't even like them. Posterity will judge you guys harshly. All those who sold out our birthright. Today, South Africa came out from nowhere and is seen as the gold country. And we that was originally named the Gold Coast. Do you know what it means to say coast? You know how vast the sea is? The coast is as vast. Gold. El Dorado. Today you have sold all your gold. Oh, Jesus. What a people. Shameless people. So when they boo you at events, you say you don't understand. Traitors in power. Dash it away. Dash it away. I'm going. Last thing I'm going to deal with. Hey, hear me. You remember the Adan Songo Lagoon? How Magdan went there, monopolized the whole thing with the support of government and chiefs. People have been shot and killed. Recently, Kablevu, some area like that called Kablevu. Gunshots, like a Rambo movie. And when I call it bloody salt, some people don't understand. It used to be Adan Songo Salt. But now, it's Adam bloody Magdan salt. When people's eyes are fixated on the money and not on humanity like Magdan is doing. You guys respect anything you call rich man. I'm not in that category. Me. Show me one person who has ever bribed me. Let him come out. I'll give him my life. And I'm not moralizing it on you. But look onto the next generation. There are people who support him because he gives them, throws things around them. And I'll keep talking about this until there is sanity. Until the people are able to deal with it. Recently, I just realized that they enskinned him in Tamale, the land of my birth. I said, these Tamale people, who, 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 for what? The king of unity. Which unity? You should be ashamed of yourself. Is it not? Wow, at which of the king's chiefs did that? I don't even know. Nagbewa would be very ashamed to hear this. You put Magdan on a horse, put him and yeah, put something on that is the king of unity. Do you know what unity is? When you gave Shatawale dance hall now, we didn't have a problem. It's okay, it's good. That's dance hall he's doing. Stone boy came, you gave him so oh, that's okay. If Sakodia comes, give it to him. Amachi the day comes, give it to him. But remember to also give your own. Tamale people, your own Gwomba people, some kind of respect. They are also doing well. Fancy Gadam, has he been enskinned? Has he been enskinned? Makasio, has he been enskinned? Israhim and the rest, they are all doing well. Or is it because they are there, the prophet is never recognized? Sharif Gali, has he been? Think about it, though. Then you bring Magdan. Maybe because he gave you some small, small, whatever. You put him on a horse. Boom, 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 boom. Hey, boom, 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 boom. Oh, yeah. Boom, 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 boom. Hey, boom, 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 boom. Around him. What a shame. You know what unity is? Go to Adan, where Magdan is causing a lot of disunity amongst the people. Look what happened at the trade fair. Everywhere he goes is controversy. Such a person cannot be a unifying force. No. 
This guy here is allegedly one of Magdan's top security couples. In fact, the leader, I am told, allegedly. Magdan security couple allegedly gunned down dead. This guy was called Alassan. And we hear that this Kablevu thing that happened, shooting, shooting, his own people mistakenly shot him. And he died. But they are keeping it under tones. They don't want anybody to hear how bloody it is. And I hear he's been buried in some village. I would like the police to investigate this. You know why they might want to hide something like this? You remember what happened to Maggie? Maggie, who was shot and killed because of this salt. Rawlings flew an helicopter there, took the dead body off, and closed the whole Adal Songo Lagoon, and removed a painting from there. And now, now a painting is at Makate Hill Junction. Because of the salt, he removed a painting. Who caused the shooting and all that? Today, if Alassan is truly dead and buried and they are hiding it, then this is the reason. Because they do not want the government to hear it and say, oh, is this how bloody it is? Then Magdan step aside like, like a painting stepped aside. You see, we talk about these things that you people are joking with it. Me, I don't eat salt. I don't eat salt at all. You understand? But salt is not only for eating. They use it for other things that may benefit the nation. So I don't directly benefit from salt. That's what I'm trying to tell you. But the people of Adan are my people. The people of Ghana are my people. The people of Africa are my people. Watch this carefully. Where is Alassan? That young man who was security couple running around, putting fear in people around Adan. Is he truly dead? Is the police aware? Who gave the burial certificate? Is there a death certificate? Please, police. Dan Parry is my very good brethren. I love him. He knows me. Please, can we investigate this? Who killed the last son? Who issued the death certificate? How about the burial? Where was he buried? Why are they hiding it? Where is the family of Alassan? What happened? This is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushunumo, where we speak truth to power. When we return tomorrow, we shall have more to tell you in the interim. This is all about Pan-Africanism, patriotism, and not politics. Whoa! Whoa!